All right, Brian, we're back in your, uh, your abode. Actually, it's not a abode, it's more of an office or something. We're gonna put your Raspberry Pi in this Nintendo Entertainment System husk. But we got a lot of planning to do, don't we? Yeah, we've got a lot of extended cables and probably some dremeling to do before we get uh, this to work properly. All right, let, let's try to get inside of this thing and try to figure out how to place all our extension cables to make this thing look like a Nintendo, be able to have USB ports in the front right. and actually have power in the back, lots of different ports we've got to configure yeah. at this point. And some of the parts that we're using from the original Pi was the power and reset button. So we're actually going to solder that to the Raspberry Pi so that we can uh, just use the front buttons to turn it off and on. So we've got a Raspberry Pi here. You've got extension cords for our networking option. We've got an extension cord for our HDMI because they're not exactly conveniently located. We want these on the back, right? Right. And I want to try and make it look as good as possible. Yeah, cause otherwise, you can probably just, if you weren't going for what uh, you're trying for style, we could probably put this in the corner, have most of the ports accessible that way. But it looked kind of ugly because it doesn't use or reuse the actual ports that are here. So how are we going to set this thing up? Well, we've been going back and forth about that, and I think maybe Legos might be a way of going about it, and a lot of epoxy. Legos might work. We're going to have to figure this out. But the main thing that you wanted was getting the USB ports here for your controller, right? Right, and to make it look flush. And the only parts that I have is the actual outer case. I don't have the existing control, old controller stuff. So we might want to, if, if we want to try to make this look as good as possible, get another spare Nintendo. They're on eBay for what, like 30 bucks? Yeah, I actually found one for like 25 with shipping for a broken one. I would never want to do one that was working. That would be blasphemy. So we've got these extension cords. So if we want to use extension cords for the front here, to measure it out, this part comes right off. And we're trying to see if it would fit. Now, these extension cords have a really hefty housing on it. And we're trying to find another solution. We could probably just put one in each if we wanted to. But I think we could support up to four controllers, you think? Yeah, we could totally do that. We just would need to get a uh, USB hub to power the Pi. And that's when this starts getting a little bit more interesting. So this Pi probably has to be over here. The hub probably over here, at least a, the part of it that would we'd rip out of its casing. Right. And then we have to have extension cords to here for this. And so how we're going to fix this, maybe a Lego, maybe reusing uh, something like a USB, a smaller USB hubs, because we started noticing something. We've got a spare Raspberry Pi here, kind of like uh, the front USB port you would have. That would fit quite well. Pretty close. In that spot, if we had a really small USB splitter hub kind of thing. Right. And I think we could find some online. No need to really reinvent the wheel here. We don't have to like create USB things. But how are we going to mount it? Lego? Epoxy? Uh, some, sort of, some sort of a combination of it. All right, so I think what we should do is we should go for a parts hunt and try to find what we have to get next because we're going to have to really screw with this to make it work. All right, so should we ask the audience what we should do next? Yeah, I think uh, we should take advantage of Google Plus and some of the know-how Twitters out there. Okay, Twitter -ers. so Twitter Twitterers. Yeah, so if you're watching some Google Plus, comment section below. Give us some of your ideas of how we can actually affix these things. We're going to try some crazy things along the way. But if we're like, hey, wait a second, that guy has a brilliant idea. I can see it already. It's already a comment. I think his name is uh, his name is Jeff. Great idea, Jeff. He says to use Legos with epoxy. We already said that. You were paying attention. You could also hit us up on Twitter if you're like, well, I watched this video. I don't want to leave a comment here. Hashtag TwitKH for these ideas for your Nest Pi box. And there might be something we overlooked, so we'll see. Oh, yeah, email us if, if we're like, we don't want to embarrass you publicly because you forgot this. Know how at twit.tv. And you're like, here you go. Here's a solution. But you don't want people to think we're really dumb. But thanks. And uh, we're going to keep messing with this. And this should be up. Uh, the actual finished product should be up sometime next week. So we hope. Mm. <laughs> thanks, Brian. <laughs> thanks, Ayaz.